Okay, hopefully you've had time to go get a pen and some paper. If you haven't, uh, run really quick because you're gonna need it when we start talking about soil tests. Now, you think all these little numbers on my soil test, man, that's tough. I'm just gonna go ask somebody else to read it. But who are you gonna ask to read it, really? Who's gonna read it? Probably the same people that are selling you the fertilizer you're using on your farm. Now, do you want somebody else to look at it and say, oh yeah, you need 400 pounds. And you say, man, that's a lot of money this year. Or do you wanna look at the soil test and say, you know what? I really need 360 pounds for my yield goal. Or maybe I need 440 pounds to get my yield goal and I've been disappointed in previous years, here's why. You know, you wanna know that interpretation yourself and have control over your own farm. So there are a lot of things on the soil test. We're gonna to try to keep it real simple for you. The first thing you wanna look at on the soil test always is soil pH. That is the very most important thing on your soil test. You must always get that. And what we're looking at is with most crops, the ideal soil pH is roughly 6.8, so maybe just slightly on the acid side of seven. Neutral is seven, and anything below that is acid, anything above that is alkaline. Like I say, 6.8 is about the ideal pH, especially for corn, soybeans, and wheat. So the closer we can get to 6.8, the higher yield we should be able to achieve with our crops, and a lot of that has to do with nutrient availability. When you're talking about high pH soils, you're going to have tie up of certain nutrients. And when you're looking at your soil test, you say, man, I'm putting on the right amounts of nutrients, I think anyway, but I'm not getting any result on my farm. Oftentimes that soil pH is the reason why. Well, you, you said high pH, it's also a problem with low pH. Let's give you a quick example on the high pH side. Usually if you have high soil pH, you have excess calcium in the soil and phosphorus becomes an issue. Let's say you have an 8.2 soil pH you'll end up with that free calcium tying up some of your phosphorus. You'll have calcium phosphate, and that's insoluble. So it can't even get into the plant. It's not in a form the plant can use. That's not a good thing. Same thing happens when you get real low soil pH. You might tie up with aluminum or some other nutrients out there. It's just not a good deal, and that's why we want to try to get that pH closer to neutral. Also, you'll have better soil life. Your bacteria will survive better fungi, your plant roots overall will be able to explore more soil because of the bacteria and fungi living in the soil and how they interact with your plant roots. It's kind of complicated, but I'm going to make it real simple for you. You've got to try to get your soil pH roughly within a half a point of that 6.8. So we want to see our soil pH between 6.3 and 7.3. If you're not in that range, you got to do something to fix that. What do we do? Well, here's the thing. On your soil test, if your pH is outside of that range, your best return on investment, getting back to our banker discussion, your best return on investment is to fix that pH. So if you've got higher pHs in more cases than not, you're looking at a drainage issue on your farm. Farm. There's something going on. In low pH ground, there are a number of causes for low pH ground. If you've got some compaction issues, you've got all your roots in a very small percentage of your soil. So they're maybe getting six or eight inches deep and that's it. So you've got tremendous root growth in six or eight inches where those roots are kicking out organic acids into the soil. And also you're applying tons of nitrogen fertilizer and it's all staying in that top six inches instead of moving throughout your whole soil. You're gonna end up with some lower pH issues in those situations. So you can fix that by liming and then also try to correct the root cause of the overall problem. So in the drainage issue, in the high pH, you wanna add you want to do zone building. You might need to do some ditching, whatever you can do to improve drainage. In the low pH, correct your compaction issues. Maybe apply the right amounts of nutrients in the right places in the field, things like that, so you don't keep lowering your pH over time. Okay, so soil pH is definitely the most important oh, thing you oh, need to look and at. and one more thing with soil <laughs> pH. There's a lot of times a, a little tricky thing on your soil test. You may notice a buffer pH. Generally with buffer pH, what that's telling you is how difficult it's going to be to always, change the soil pH. Always, that's what's telling And you. it's something for the guys in the lab yeah. to worry about, not necessarily you. So when, when you see that buffer pH, Really what you're looking for is how much lime am I going to need to put on in those low pH situations. Let the guys at the lab tell you how much lime it's going to take. Okay, so soil pH is super important. We're going to talk real quickly about cation exchange capacity. That's the next thing you need to take a look at. What that is, that is a measure of the type of clay, the amount of clay, and the amount of organic matter you have in your field. It basically tells you the holding capacity of your soil. Your soil's ability to hold everything. Water, nutrients, chemical, fertilizer. 
your soil's overall holding capacity is measured with cation exchange capacity. Now if you say, oh, well, what's the big deal about that? I'll just give you one example, and, and we talk about this on our show from time to time, when you're looking at nitrogen and how much you can apply in one shot on your field. Let's say you have a cation exchange capacity of 20, just to pick a round number, and you're raising 200 bushel corn, and you need roughly 200 pounds of nitrogen. Well, your soil at 20 can hold about 10 times your CEC in pounds of nitrogen at one time. So 20 CEC times 10 is 200 pounds of nitrogen you can hold at one time. So if you're looking for 200 bushel corn, you can put on 200 pounds of nitrogen and your soil will hold it. It won't leach away on you. Well, there are a lot more things to talk about with soil testing. We'll discuss those on future shows, but once again, soil pH is really important. Try to keep it within about a half a point of 6.8, and cation exchange capacity is important to know so you know how much your soil can hold of everything. Well, one of the things that the soil test will not tell you is how to kill our weed of the week, but we'll show you coming up next.